Welcome to The Power of Faith with David Hathaway. In this episode, David continues his teaching on the importance of prayer. Prayer is not just a repetition of words, or reading from a book. When you ask God, ask in faith. Don't waver, in what you're believing for. You will receive what you ask. In the first epistle of John, we are taught in chapter 5. I have written this to you, who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know, you have eternal life. And we are confident, that he hears us whenever we ask for anything, that pleases him. And since we know he hears us, when we make our requests, we also know, that he will give us what we ask for. Now, please join David, as he ministers today's word. And although, three days after the trial, as you know, most of you know the story, that in a dream, God showed me that I would be out of the prison and in London preaching in the largest auditorium to 10,000 people at an Easter convention, which gave me two things. One, that I would be out of the prison Secondly, it gave me a date, and how would I, as an unknown Bible smuggler, be preaching to 10,000 people? And so I continued in praying to this, but it was only after I'd been in the prison for another five months that I finally managed to smuggle a Bible back into my cell. I always laugh and say, well, what do you expect? I was a convicted, convicted as a professional smuggler. I became the only person in the whole of the prison with a Bible. And when I opened it, I, I turned up, I said, Lord, where do I read? Do I start in Genesis? Do I start in Matthew? Where do I start? And it's like the Holy Spirit said to me, well, your name is David. Why don't you read what David said? And so I turned to the Psalms and began reading very clearly from the Psalm 1 until I came to Psalm 35. I've got it open in my Bible in front of me right now. Psalm 35, verse 18. And David says, um, I will give you thanks in the great congregation. I will praise you among much people. Now, this is where faith comes in because I leapt up in that prison And I said, Lord, that's the answer. David speaks about giving thanks in a great congregation, praising you among many people. That means I will be out of the prison for Easter and speaking in the Royal Albert Hall. I can tell you it took a great deal of faith for me to accept that, but I did. So much so that... A few days afterwards, when I was thinking about it and uh, talking about it, and I was um, saying to the Lord, well, this is a tremendous miracle if you're going to get me out of this prison uh, with such a long sentence. And after all, that vision was only a few days after the trial and the judgment again when I was found guilty. Uh, Not of smuggling, by the way. But um, I was saying, Lord, if you're going to work such a big miracle, my birthday comes four days before Easter. I want you to release me on my birthday. I said, Lord, if you can work one miracle, why can't you work another? I mean, people are a little bit amazed when I say this because I was already so convinced that God was going to get me out for Easter. But I said, Lord... Will you send me home for my birthday? (laughs) But me being me, I said, yes, Lord. But if you will, I want to see it in writing. If you will give me the answer, show me another verse that's got to be in the Psalms where you speak about setting free someone who's in chains. Wow. Wow. Well, I kept on reading. I was reading on and came through Psalm after the other until I came to Psalm 67 and 68. 
And reading Psalm 68 in verse 6, what does David say? He says, God sets the solitary in families. He brings out those which are bound with chains. I said, Lord, that's the exact verse. So it means that you will work two miracles. One, that you send me home for my birthday. And two, that you send me home for Easter and that I will be speaking in that Easter convention. You all know my story, how that I was released on my birthday. You have to read the book to get the real story, how I was released on my birthday. And because I flew home with the prime minister who had flown out to release me, I flew home sitting in the airplane next to the prime minister. And because of the publicity, when we landed in Heathrow with all the press and the television cameras, I mean, he made a, he made a big thing out of it, I can tell you, that... I got a telephone call from the churches. We've seen the miracle of your release. Would you be strong enough to speak in the Royal Albert Hall on Monday? And of course I said, yes. That. So God literally, and to me what's so interesting is literally to the very day, God fulfilled both of those promises. And even when I was, uh, 20 years ago, taken with lung cancer, and I was praying, I, I was asking the Lord if he would heal me, and he very, very clearly gave me a scripture in which he said he would give me both health and healing. Now, he gave me that scripture before the miracle, but you know how that miracle happened when I was in Germany and how after praying that night and getting into my bed and virtually dying, that the whole cancer came out of my mouth. And that's more than 20 years ago. And so God not only gave me healing, but age 91, God gives me health. I mean, this is, it, was a, it was a wonderful thing. He gave me a double promise. So what I'm trying to assure you is this, that God not only just simply answers prayer, but we can see the impossible happen if we believe. Because, you know, I, I, I would turn you very quickly to scriptures in Mark 11 and uh, also in, uh, in, in, in Luke. And if I turn you to Mark chapter 11, it's very interesting that um, it speaks there about the uh, miracles. I mean, this is where Jesus calls his disciples on the Mount of Olives to go and find the colt and so on. But... Uh, on the next day, when they were come to Bethany, Jesus was hungry, it's verse 12. And seeing a fig tree, having leaves, he came, thinking that he would find some fruit. And there's nothing, only leaves. And Jesus cursed the fig tree. But if you then turn to verse 20, um, the following morning as they passed by, and they saw the fig tree was already dead, Peter, obviously it's Peter, who's always the outspoken one, said, Lord, how come? This is verse 21. That fig tree which you cursed is already dead. And Jesus didn't answer him specifically on that question. But what Jesus says in verse 22, have faith in God. We want to briefly tell you about our work in Ukraine. The eastern part of Ukraine has remained a volatile and critical area. With united efforts and unwavering faith, we've conducted missions to the frontline cities where people are taking refuge in basements. We've delivered a wide range of relief supplies, including financial assistance, generators, and most importantly, we provided spiritual support. 
collaborating with chaplains, who play a pivotal role in reaching the front line, we were able to access critically affected areas. Our God is about to do great things. His power is on the increase. And he wants to demonstrate his power through you. In 1994, David Hathaway set out to win Siberia for Christ, by signs, wonders and miracles. Over 100,000 received Christ. And over 1,300 miracles of healing were recorded. Why Siberia, is the amazing story of what happened, and will challenge you to evangelize your city, your nation, and see God's power revealed through you. Why Siberia, is now available on Kindle from Amazon. Or visit Eurovision.org dot uk forward slash shop for the paperback edition of why siberia thank you for listening to the power of faith broadcast with david hathaway we would love to hear from you contact us by visiting eurovision.org.uk also available online are many free teaching resources to help you on your walk with god David has written many faith-building books to encourage and inspire. Order these online today. Each month, David ministers online and in person. Our ministry is only possible because of the faithful support of so many people. For details on our evangelism and humanitarian relief work, visit eurovision.org.uk. Thank you again for listening.